Good morning and welcome to City Road Baptist Church. We are glad that you are able to join with us to give thanks to our living God. As we draw near to him this morning, we are going to sing some songs and hymns of praise and worship. Let us just pause for a moment before we begin. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. And I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh yes, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, and I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises, and I'm so glad you're in my life, and I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises, and I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender I will give my every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part. Of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath, for you've paid a great cost. Giving up your life to death, even death on a cross. You took all my shame away, there defeated my sin. Open up the gates of heaven and beckon me in. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Jesus, what can be said? What can be sung 
as a praise of your name for the things you have done. Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part, of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. Let's draw near to him in prayer. The love that drew salvation's plan. The love that brought it down to man. We want to say thank you, Father, for coming into our situation. We thank you this morning for how you have kept us in and through this very challenging period that we're going through. We thank you for your provision in the most dire of situations. We thank you for coming close to us as we seek a pathway through what we are in. We thank you that you are ever present, speaking and revealing your will to us. We come this morning and ask for your forgiveness. When we turn our own way rather than follow your path, when we allow the moment to take control of us rather than to listen to your word. And so, Father, as we draw near to you and seek to go forward in your mighty name, as we seek to go back into our places of worship, we pray you will grant us wisdom and courage and a realization that you are the living God who is with us and always will be with us. We thank you for every part of your body throughout our world and for every part, Father, we ask that your spirit will descend upon us, your spirit will work through us. For the whole world, we pray today, Lord, the world that is suffering, those who have been made, as it were, Lord, separate from the things that are happening round about them, those who have been marginalized, those who are going through suffering, those, Father, who have very little to eat, we bring them to you this morning. And we ask that as a world, we will begin to look at ourselves and to recognize our responsibility for each other and to share what you have blessed us with, with each other. And so, Father, we thank you that you are with us in the midst of this pandemic. And we pray for those countries, Father, who are finding it so difficult, Lord, to put into place the things that are necessary to bring about changes within this situation. We pray you will grant wisdom to the medics, to those who are working tirelessly, Lord. We pray that you will help them in their struggle and reveal to them the way forward. And so this morning, we thank you that we can come and give thanks to you. And we look to you, God, because you, our help comes from you. And we ask now that you would continue to speak to us as we listen to you and listen to your word for your kingdom and your glory's sake. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And help us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. There's a song we used to sing as uh, in within our junior church, and we've heard it sung a number of times. Says, "He's got the whole world." And at this moment, when we're feeling somewhat unsure about what's happening, I want you to remember that God has got you. God has got you in His hands. Maxine is going to come and read to us in a moment, but before she does, I want to share a few thoughts with you. Let me again thank all those who came forward to help us in preparing our building for service. We have achieved much in the past week, but there is still more to be done. We are hoping that in the next week will be, it will be completed. And so for the 2nd of August, it is our plan to start service again within our building. God is working his purposes out and I would say let us not run ahead of him but walk with him. Let us listen to him and respond to his instructions. Do not allow fear to fill your heart but let the faith that God has blessed you with take you to a new place of understanding where you can begin to experience 
the power of God releasing you to serve him. Thank you again for your prayers. Thank you for your support in many ways. Thank you for the way in which you are rallying around the members of the community and bringing support and aid to them. God is in us and with us and God is doing a new thing. Let us not be left behind, but let us walk in step with him as we journey through this new experience. Our God is an awesome God. He can keep us in the valley. Wherever we find ourselves, he's able to keep us and to carry us through. Maxine is going to come and read to us. And after Maxine has read to us, one of our sisters, Sister Eurelia, is going to bring a testimony. May God bless the reading of the word to us. Happy Sunday. May God's richest blessing be with you all today and always. Our reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 11. I will read verses 28 to 30, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Thank you, Maxine. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Just a short testimony to give my Lord and Saviour all the praises, all the glory and all the honour. Thanking him for bringing me safely through surgery in the last three or four weeks that I had to go through. While on day two in the hospital, I was experiencing a pain that I've never experienced before. So much so that the nurses had to call the surgeon who carried out the surgery. And while the surgeon was standing at the bottom of my bed and the nurses, while they were standing there, I could do nothing but to cry out to my Lord. I started praying and I was not ashamed to call my Lord's name. I was not ashamed to remind my Lord that he said by his stripes we are healed. And I cried out to my God and they were standing there listening. And I felt though I was going through the pain, it was an opportunity for me for them to hear that I am crying out to someone and I was asking for medication to take the pain away but I was calling on my God to place his hands of healing on the area of my body that I was experiencing the pain. I want to say brothers and sisters it doesn't matter what we're going through whether it's pain where there's a time of laughter, a time of sadness, a time of sorrow, we must never, never leave the Lord out. We must always make room for him. It doesn't matter what we're going through. In good and in bad times, we must remember that he's always there. And so I just want to encourage myself and for those who are listening, just encourage us to make the Lord the center of our life. Whatever we are going through, he will go through it with us. We just have to remind him that he promised he will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for listening. Have a blessed day. Thank you for that testimony, Eurelia. When we call upon God, when we are not ashamed, to call upon him, he does amazing things. He says, you're light and you're salt in the world. Turn with me in your Bibles to the reading that Maxine has just read for us from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. As I said earlier, our theme is a purposeful life. Let me ask you, 
What are you living for? Have you found your purpose in life? Living purposefully gives us a focus and a sense of direction. It allows us to stay living in the present as we address the issues around us and the challenges that may be in our way as we head towards our goal. We focus not only on the here and now, but we focus on the goal ahead of us. What are the central motivating aims in your life? What are they? What drives you? What are your awakening thoughts in the morning? What is it that you feel the urge to get on with and to do? The songwriter says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving grace. A purposeful life, you see, is lived from the level of the soul, the innermost being. Living from the level of the soul means moving past the peripheral. You know all those things that we see with the eye and desire and long for? The things we think about that we want to achieve? A purposeful life moves from that periphery of life filled with many thoughts. How life should be in a very certain way if I have this and I have that. It moves from that. And it moves away to developing a deeper sense of your spiritual life. A realization that you're more than what you see. It requires paying attention to your true nature. And it takes time. You have to learn how to reflect. To examine yourself. To examine your situation and to see where your life is going and to identify what is the purpose of what you are doing. We need to move beyond our own limited beliefs about the world and to try and fit into the bigger picture and to realize that we are part of something that is amazing called life. But what is my purpose in life? The prophet Jeremiah says that God has a plan for each one to give us hope and to give us a future. Do you know what your future entails? What are you living for? The songwriter says. What am I living for? He said. As he made reference to his love for a woman. What am I living for? He said. If I'm not living for you. What is the thing that takes hold of you? And calls you and draws you and drives you. Finding our purpose in life is not always easy. Why? Because for some of us we, we muddle through life. And we take very little time to reflect and to consider where we are. And before we know it we find ourselves in a situation that we don't really want to be in. But if we're going to change it would cause us a lot of distraction and trouble and interruption. But let me say to you this morning, unless you have a purpose, a purpose that can drive you and call you and hold you, then you may be living a meaningless life. Jesus recognized the challenges that each one of us face day after day after day. Looking for meaning and purpose. We run here and we run there. We do this and we do that. And yet we are finding no fulfillment. For some of us, we plunge ourselves into education. We plunge ourselves into making money. And we think that we will find ourselves and true meaning through these things. Yes, there is a measure of joy to be experienced in those things. But the interesting thing is... You arrive at a place when you realize that there is still a longing within you. There is some, still somewhere else to go and you're not quite sure which way to turn. You have all that you need. 
And yet, there is a need that has not been satisfied. He invites us to come to him so that he might fill us with real meaning and real purpose. Come to me, in verse 28, he says. Come to me. Come and find meaning and purpose and adventure. Come to me, he said. He also says in John 10 and 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief comes into your situation to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he says, But I have come that you may have life and have it in all its fullness. I wonder what it is that's robbing you of the fullness of life that could be yours. You know that job that you think you're in control of? Have you become a slave to it? You know that the possessions you have that you think is yours and you can do whatever you want with it? Have you become a slave to those things? Have you lost your meaning and your purpose? You know that house that you live in, that you work so hard to make it just so? Have you become a slave to it? Is that your purpose in life? You know all those children that God has blessed you with and your grandchildren that you love so much? Have you become a slave to that situation and have you lost your purpose? Let me say to you this morning, unless you have a purpose that drives you and satisfies you and fill you with joy and says there is more, then you're not living in the right path today. He offers abundant life, fullness of life. It's an invitation to exercise faith and confidence in him. So when he said, come to me, he wasn't calling us to a philosophy. He wasn't calling us to become a member of a particular church or organization. He wasn't calling us to take the communion the sacraments. He wasn't calling us to go through baptism, but he was calling us into a, reliv a living relationship that will not only transform us, but will empower us and fill us with purpose. Are you tired, my sisters, my brothers, of trying to satisfy your longings with the things that just never satisfies? Hmm? Are you shackled by your circumstances? Do you wish that you could change your direction and your circumstances and do something different and find a real purpose that burns within you and drives you? Well, let me say to you this morning, you can. All that you need is to recognize where you are and recognize that you are no longer satisfied with the things that you have achieved and there is more to be had and be prepared to come and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are prepared to do that, you will begin to see that so much you have missed. And there is so much to be gained in following Jesus. Do you sometimes ask out loud, what is it all about? Do you look around and you see the things that you have, you have achieved? You have amassed and you thank and you said, look at me. And then ask, what is it all about? Jesus offers rest for the weary. Rest for the weary who are tired of trying and finding they can never succeed. They have su some success, yes. But when it is examined, it's just like dust and it blows away. He offers rest for the weary. The end of one's journey and the beginning of another journey. Are you prepared, my sisters, my brothers, to find rest? From your own physical, mental energy, trying to achieve and to gain. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. What a promise. What does it mean to receive rest from God? When the purpose becomes bigger than us and we recognize that there is resources to achieve this purpose and not only resources to achieve the purpose, but that, that purpose has taken hold of us and has changed and transformed us, we will then cease to strive, cease to make comparisons of others, cease to wanting to be, as it were, something else, a 
apart from being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherein true life is to be found. How do I find purpose? How do I find purpose for my life? The world would say, first, create a compelling future. Right, okay? I'll sit down and this is what I want to achieve in a year's time, in three years' time, in five years' time. And this is what I need to do today in order to achieve those things. Set out a plan, the world would say, and follow that plan. Let there be markers along the way so you know when you arrive at a certain place and then you will feel that satisfaction. Yes, I will not deny that reality that there is satisfaction to be had in this world. Again, a songwriter says, there is no satisfaction without salvation. In other words, the satisfaction that you may achieve and feel from achieving certain goal is nothing in comparison that you will feel when you are on the pathway of following Christ. They will say, create something that is worth living for and work at it. They will say also to you, focus. Focus on one thing at a time. They will also say to you, act now. Don't give up or wait for another period, but act now. What Jesus says, he says, come to me. And I will give you rest. And I will give you meaning. And I will give you a purpose that is worth living for. You see, we're part of a world. And we need to live within that world. And we need to know how to relate to one another. We need to know how to relate to the Almighty. And we need to know how to relate to our fellow brothers and sisters. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The call here is to make a profession of faith in God through Jesus Christ. And spend time in studying his word. Studying his teachings and allowing his teaching to drive you forward. Take my yoke upon you, he says, and learn from me. He says, I will give you rest. A rest that comes from focusing and upon God and drawing from him all that he has for us. Let's think for a moment here. He says, take my yoke upon you and I will give you rest what was he actually asking us to do making a profession of faith and confidence in his ability to not only forgive us but to cleanse us put his spirit within us and set us on the right path that's what his promise is to take his yoke upon him he says, my yoke, he says, is not like other yoke. But if you take my yoke upon you, then you will know something about life in itself. In Matthew 4 and verse 4, Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by his own achievement, his own success, but man shall find rest and purpose as he listens to the word of the Almighty God. There you will find rest for your soul. And if you take on board the word of God, you will indeed find rest for your soul and you will know what it means. To rest in the almighty God. My yoke he says is easy. 
My yoke is easy. What does that mean? My yoke is easy. Let's think for a moment. What is a yoke? A yoke is that which links two animals normally in a field and they walk together. A yoke is when you come and you make a pledge to be the husband or the wife and to spend your life together. You're coming to make a promise, a promise that is filled with expectations and that promise you hope will not only provide for you, but that promise will keep you and help you and enable you to experience the power that comes from that relationship. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What did he speak of? The profession of faith in him and the subjection to his teachings may seem like a yoke. And Jesus made an allusion to the law of Moses that outline the requirements of the people in relationship to God. How they may come into a relationship with God. The Mosaic law was very vast and demanding. And it held individuals within restrictive area. How they can move, what they can do, what they can say, how and when and where. And here this illusion, it was just an illusion to the law of Moses, but also it was in distinction from it. In that, it is to a relationship that Christ has called us with a Messiah, a living Savior. It isn't a dead legalistic formula to follow, but it is to come in line with a living God who is with you, who promised to walk with you and to talk with you. He says, if you come and yoke yourself with me, you will find life much easier. You will find living for God a joy, even in the midst of the challenge. Why? Because you begin not only to find yourself, but to discover that there is real power in God through Jesus Christ. Power to overcome. Power, power to get through. Power to live the life. So the yoke of Jesus is one that binds us to him. And we walk with him and walk in step with him. And when we are walking in step with him, we will not experience the pressures that keep us down. We will not request. We will not experience the thirst for other things because our desires are fulfilled in him he says my yoke is easy seems a contradiction to a yoke that restricts you but he says no if you come to me you will be free and you will experience joy and meaning and purpose and you have something to live for and he says my burden is light what did he mean by my burden is light? He was speaking in respect to the heavy loads that the scribes and the Pharisees placed upon the people from the legal code. He says, if you come to me, the burden I lay upon you is to recognize that you're part of humanity and to love your fellow man as yourself, to recognize that we all need certain things in order to thrive. And that God is able not only to give you those things, but to enable you to be used in an amazing way. That to do the will of God will not be burdensome, but it will be a joy. And it will release you and empower you to go in the name of Jesus. The burden that he lays upon you is not one to crush you, but it is one to relieve you and to enable you and to set you free. He says, come to me if you're struggling. Come to me if you're dissatisfied. Come to me if you're thirsty. Come to me if you're longing for meaning and purpose. 
And so as I conclude this morning, I want to leave these thoughts with you. Are you moving towards a goal in your life that is in line with your core values? Or are you living at odds with yourself? The thing you believe you're not able to fulfill or to achieve, you're going in another direction. As you look around your world, how do you fit within your world? Are you finding that your life is making a difference? Or are you just going through the same old thing day after day after day? He says, come to me if you're tired of the, the daily rush and issues. It doesn't mean that you will not have to go through those, but you'll have a new motivation while you're doing what you're doing. To take his yoke is an invitation to come willingly and to recognize that here is someone who loves you with an everlasting love, was prepared to go to Calvary and to die for you, to take your place and to bring to an end the fear of death because he rose again. He made the reference that those of you who are familiar with the Pharisaic, the Mosaic legalistic law and the Pharisees and the scribes who applies it, you know how tiresome that is and yet you do these things and you feel no joy. Are you going through a religious motion where every day you go to church, you pray, and yet you have no joy? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Because if you don't know him, it means nothing. He says, come to me and you will find rest for your soul. And when your soul is at rest, you will then begin to thrive. Hear the word of God this morning. If you come to him, he will never leave you. He will walk with you and he will not burden you. He says two commandments, love God with your entire being and your neighbor as yourself. And in so doing, you fulfill all the laws and the prophets. It may sound simple. It is challenging. But when we come in obedience and allow him to empower us and we allow the love of God to fill us, we begin to realize that indeed it is possible. And it is amazing. Find purpose. Take time to reflect. Find the courage to change your way. And come back to Jesus. And find the meaning for which you were created. And you'll begin to enjoy life. It is never too late. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's only too late. When you're no longer here. It's only too late when you're here. And you refuse to take and board the word of God. May God take his word placed in our hearts. And bless us. For his kingdom and his glory's sake. Amen. As we sing this closing hymn this morning, please join with us. If you don't know it, then listen to the words. And as we sing it, let's realize that God is working out his purposes in our lives. Maxine is going to come and join me as we sing the final hymn. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I had sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Praise the Lord since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy, oh my soul, like a sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart. And no dark clouds of dark, now my pathway obscure, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, praise the Lord, since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy, oh my soul, like a sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, there's a light in the valley of death now for me. Since Jesus came into my heart, 
and the gates of the city beyond I can see, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, praise the Lord, since Jesus came into my heart, hallelujah, floods of joy, oh my soul, like a sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know, since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy, as onward I go, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, praise the Lord, since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah, floods of joy, oh my soul, like a sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. If you have tried everything in life and you're still not satisfied, why don't you try Jesus? And even if you feel some satisfaction, there is still more to be had because life is to be had in knowing the Savior of the world. Father, take our hearts and our minds. Fill us with your truth and help us to appropriate that truth and grant us the courage to respond to your revealed knowledge. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen. Let's share the grace together. May the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ and, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and go with you. Have a wonderful day.